Did you know that these futuristic steel orbs, a strange hangar, and a massive yacht club all share something in common? They are integral components of a massive new tourist destination that has been constructed entirely from scratch. Welcome to the $28 billion Red Sea Mega Project. Join us today as we explore the current construction progress and discover how this ambitious project could pave the way for a vibrant future in Saudi Arabia as part of its Vision 2030 initiative. Vision 2030 Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 is a big plan. They want to build many massive projects to get lots of tourists and not rely so much on oil. Some of these projects are super huge, like a 170-kilometer long city in a straight line and a giant cube-shaped skyscraper with big holograms. People think these projects are crazy because they are so big and need to be done by 2030. But one project is close to being done, and it's the Red Sea Project. It costs $28 billion and aims to offer really fancy tourism while being good for the environment. People wonder if that's possible. This project is important because it could set the path for other big projects, and its success or failure will show how well the whole Vision 2030 is working. What is the Red Sea Project? What is the Red Sea Project? It was announced in 2017 by Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. They started building it two years later, and now it's almost ready to open its first resorts to the public. The Red Sea Project is in Saudi Arabia, on the west coast, between the cities of Umlaj and Alwaj. It's a huge place, almost as big as the whole country of Belgium. It's surrounded by the fourth largest barrier reef system in the world and has over 90 untouched islands, beautiful beaches, mountains, canyons, big desert dunes, and even dormant volcanoes. To get there, they're building a whole new airport just for this project called the Red Sea International Airport. It's small compared to other Saudi airports, but that's because they plan to have about 1 million visitors a year. This airport is all about luxury. It's special because it won't have a baggage claims area, so you won't have to wait for your bags. They'll take your luggage right to your hotel for you. Getting from the airport to the resorts will probably be by cars, buses, and ferries if you're going to an island resort. Because the airport is in the middle of everything, it won't take too long to reach most of the big resorts, even though they're spread out over a big area. The Red Sea Resorts Let's check out the resorts one by one. First, there are the Umahat Islands. These islands are all about water sports. You can do things like sailing, windsurfing, and kayaking in the crystal clear water with colorful coral reefs. Next is Shura Island, which is like the main hub of the Red Sea Project. It's designed to blend in with nature, and it'll have a golf course, a marina, a beach club, 11 fancy hotels. Then we have Shaibara Island, this island offers you a stay in futuristic villas that float over super clear water. You can explore ocean life here because there's a big drop off in the reef close to the shore. It looks pretty cool, right? And there's the Amala Resort, which used to be a separate project. It's up north and is being developed by the Red Sea Project now. It will have more than 3,000 hotel rooms, fun stuff to do, and a yacht club. Now let's talk about the inland resorts. One of them is the Southern Dunes, it's in a remote desert area and will have 40 villas, a hotel complex, and a big pool. They're making the buildings with materials that don't get too hot and will give natural shade to keep cool. Lastly, there's Desert Rock. It's built into the mountainside, so it keeps the mountain shape. You'll have an amazing view of the landscape here, and you can explore the desert by hiking or riding dune buggies. These resorts are being made in special ways. Now let's talk about what the Red Sea Project is all about. The CEO, John Pagano, says they're not just trying to create jobs and money for Saudi Arabia, but they also want to show the world how to do things better. It's a big goal and we'll look into it more later. The main things they want to achieve are economic benefits and making a positive change in how big projects are done. Economic benefit for Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia wants to find other ways to make money besides relying on their limited natural resources, like oil. Tourism is a great way to do that, especially when they have such beautiful places like the Red Sea. The Red Sea project is supposed to create about 70,000 jobs for Saudi citizens, but it's not clear if it will make a profit. Let's break it down simply. The project is expected to bring in about $5.8 billion every year by the time it's done in 2030. They think they'll get about 1 million visitors each year. 
So each tourist would need to spend an average of $5,800 for their vacation. That's quite a lot of money, especially if you want to go with your family. And we're not even sure if they'll actually get that many visitors. But if they can make it work, they'll make lots of money, billions of dollars every year. If you're enjoying this video, please subscribe to our channel. We put a lot of time and effort into making these videos. Now, let's move on to the next part. Sustainable development. The main goal is to do the project in a way that doesn't harm the environment too much. When you build something really big in a beautiful natural place, it can hurt nature. But this can be a problem for almost any huge project. To fix this, the Red Sea project is doing some special things. First, the Red Sea Airport will use renewable energy, like the sun and wind, to run. It wants to be the first airport this big to not add extra pollution to the air. They'll use things like biofuel for the planes. Also, all the resorts in the project will run on renewable energy all the time. They're even going to have the biggest battery storage in the world. This will help stop a lot of pollution, like what a small city makes. They're also thinking about nature while building. For example, the steel villas on Shaibara Island float on the water to protect the sea life. In the long run, they want to make the local environment better by planting over 25 million plants and making nature richer. It all sounds really good, maybe even too good. We'll have to see if they can really do all this, especially making an airport that doesn't add pollution when lots of people come to visit. If they can do it, it'll be a big success. Current progress, how far along is the Red Sea project in making its vision come true? Well, it's made a lot of progress in the last few years. Many of the resorts are over 50% done, even the tricky ones like Desert Rock. Some resorts, like the Yumahat Islands with two hotels and the Southern Dunes, are expected to open to the public later this year. The airport will open for domestic flights soon, with international flights in 2024. Most of the resorts are more than halfway done, and there haven't been any big problems so far, so it's pretty likely the project will be finished. We've seen fancy, eco-friendly resorts before, like in the Maldives or Fiji, and they did well. But this is the first time they're building such huge resorts from the ground up. The success of the Red Sea project will depend on how many people visit. So whether it fulfills its vision depends on all of us. This is probably true for all the Vision 2030 projects. What do you think? Will the Red Sea project be a success? Would you want to visit these new resorts? Let us know in the comments. If you want to see more projects like this, check out our video about another big mega projects. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.